Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick. We're here in San Francisco at Mobile World Congress Americas 2017. And I'm talking with Wes Johnston, who is the CEO of the TIA, the Telecommunications Industry Association. Wes, good to meet you. Martin, thank you for being here. A pleasure. Um, you took up your post as CEO of the TIA in June this year, so you're comparatively new in the job. What made you take it? Yeah, it's been uh, about 90 days now. And uh, I took the job because first and foremost, like everybody here, I love technology. And I love the dynamic growth of the industry, whether it's wireline, wireless, satellite, the building of networks, deploying of edge computing standards. I just, I, I'm a technology junkie. I love what's going on in this industry. So I don't think you can be effective in this role unless you start there. So I just, I love the space. And then when I took a closer look at TIA, I saw the foundation of a tremendous organization. And when I, when I took a look at the foundation of what's here and the opportunity to lead and the willingness that the board has and the support they've given me to foster change and to grow, like I have to do this. And so I, I, I came on board 90 days ago. Okay, thank you. Now, interestingly, you don't have the usual background of a senior executive of a trade association, having been, have you actually come directly from private industry, have you not? I have. Um, my most recent past has been in private equity. So I have been doing M&A, mergers and acquisition work uh, in the technology, media, telecommunications space. So I've been a board member and a director for the last five years doing M&A work for, in some cases, the companies who are here. Um, prior to that, you're right, I had a long run as a business executive, a technology leader, building and growing businesses, which gives me a really valid perspective on the opportunity here, um, and one which, uh, together with the private equity investing, gives me some insights on the opportunity. So I was going to ask you next, uh, which I may as well do so, uh, how has your antecedent helped and affected how you've approached the TIA and its mission? Well, if you go back to the disciplines of private equity, it's about understanding the opportunity, we refer to it as due diligence, and taking a look at um, traditional opportunities uh, defined by market opportunities, products, services, the people, the ability to sell, the ability to deliver. So um, all of the business disciplines that we look for in a high performing company and seek to build in any high performing company um, is the discipline I, I looked at this opportunity. And so when I take a look at how we shape it going forward, many of the business disciplines that are second nature for the companies who are here um, are, are increasingly what we need to adopt at the association. So for example, markets need to be understood, segmented, and valued. Offerings need to be defined, productized, with a compelling value proposition that allows us to compete and win in an increasingly market, competitive marketplace. These, these words roll off my tongue because of the discipline of how the businesses compete. And my point is, increasingly, it needs to define how associations compete to create member value. Interesting, because competition between industry associations, industry bodies, is something that's not mentioned very often. It's not, uh, you know, if you take a look at the space, um, I'll, I'll, cybersecurity is just one example. There, there are 31 active associations just on the topic of cybersecurity. So our members who are looking for a destination, an affinity group where they can drive change, build solutions in a fraternity with their peers, have a lot of choices. So that creates a competitive marketplace. Um, having said that, there's probably never been a greater opportunity than now for TIA and for similar associations to partner with each other. So on the one hand, it is an increasingly competitive marketplace. But on the other hand, if you try to go it alone, I think you're going to fail. You have to find, we have to find ways to partner with other associations, and we're doing that. You led me very nicely onto my next question, which is this. You've been, as you say, three months in the job now, 90 days but thereabouts. Um, what's the vision then, given the circumstances you've just been talking about, of the direction the TIA should take now? Is it going to stay on its present course, or are you going to trim the sails a bit and lead it on somewhere else? What's the mission today? 
So much of the mission is unchanged, meaning we advocate on behalf of our equipment suppliers, manufacturers, integrators, and service providers. We build solutions in partnership with them. And increasingly, we want to be a destination. So a, a, a big part of the, of the vision that I'm espousing is one that foundationally begins with making us a destination where members feel they can convene as communities to drive their businesses forward. And that's a foundational item uh, of, of a place where we're easy to do business with. And then on top of that sit these towers, specific solution sets of how and where we can add value for the members. Smart communities, smart buildings, infrastructure assurance, device assurance. These are current offerings and increasingly we need to be able to work with our members to quickly spin up working groups and sessions foundationally, but then where appropriate, invest to drive into the marketplace with our members um, solutions that create value for the community as well as for the, the end customer. Let's move on, you're in Washington DC, center of it all. Um, what are the s some of the most important and pressing public policy issues you see before you now and what direction are you going to take them in? Well, our policy advocacy efforts align around our membership. So we start there with the equipment uh, manufacturers and suppliers and the integrators. Um, and I was privileged recently to have some time uh, at the White House on the topic of, of infrastructure modernization. So we believe strongly that broadband modernization needs to be an important part of infrastructure. And when we, when we take a look at wireline, wireless, satellite, you know, there's still pockets of the country that are underserved, unserved, and so a combination of broadband modernization, additional outreach, um, we believe should be, and we advocate on behalf of our members, should be part of the infrastructure spending bill. Um, and that's a, that's a big part of our outreach. What about others? Well, certainly net neutrality is a big topic. Uh, we continue to advocate on behalf of our members for that. Um, in particular, that broadband should be, re should be classified as a Title I information service. Um, so, you know, our policy committee sets these priorities and, and, and we're, we're pretty active. We've got a, a pretty solid team that's, that's, that's aggressively on, on the hill and working with our members. Thanks, last question to you, Wes. Given your background we've been talking about, what technologies and forces do you think are, will have the most impact on the industry over the next, let's say the next year, 24 months? Yeah, that's a great question because there's so much going on. It would be, it would be easy enough for me, for example, simply to say, well, certainly the Internet of Things is an important driver, and, and, it's, and it is. Um, and we, we, have, we have our solution sets there. Um, what I don't want to lose sight of, though, is, is, is the intersection of all of these application-specific um, routes to market, uh, Internet of Things, smart buildings, smart communities, et cetera, and the role that cybersecurity and securing it uh, plays. Um, I, I like to use the expression that security needs to be um, uh, baked in and not bolted on. And so when we see these intersection points, so I think a big part of the opportunity is not just identifying the application and taking that uh, to market with our members, but, but seeing how the, taking a holistic approach of seeing how all of these things interrelate. And cyber is just one great example where it's, it's hard to imagine having any kind of, of of discussion on an application specific technology uh, without a pretty quick follow on conversation to how do you secure it, how do you ensure privacy, how do you, how do you effect assurance, whether it's device level assurance, and then how do you elevate beyond that into this, this bigger, this stronger concept of trust. Trust in who you're doing business with and, and the insight that not only can they deliver the products and services, but they can, they can be trusted to some standard. Where's Johnston? Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Martin.